We're excited to check in with our political analyst, David Yankai, this morning. You were here after the primaries in April, here after the RNC, DNC, joining us once again this morning. Well, I'm happy to be here. And we're happy to have you. You know, Chris and I, we were both at our own homes, sitting on the couch this morning, mm -hmm. looking at, you know, the live Trump victory speech, and just really, like the rest of the world, watching his demeanor. Uh, he's just so much calmer than what we're used to. Well, you had the advantage of actually watching it because I went to bed at 12.30 okay. and then the alarm went off and he was talking and I thought, oh my heavens, he won. And uh, the demeanor, I think, is very hopeful uh, because given what he's done in the campaign, his demeanor in the campaign was not the best. He was criticized even by his own party. So I think he is sounding a hopeful note and I really believe that the presidency changes the person who uh, attains it because it's such a long slog. I was very um, impressed by the fact that he was generous to Hillary Clinton for her service. Uh, Hillary Clinton is going to be speaking to uh, the country later on this morning, so it's going to be interesting to hear what she has to say. She's called Donald Trump to concede, reports are saying, but hasn't made that speech just yet. Yeah. Why do you think so many polls were wrong here? Because we had certain states that went uh, not the direction we were expecting and going against the polls we've seen for months here. Well, a couple of things. I think the model for the polls has always been that they will go after people who have voted in previous elections or, or people who are like likely to vote. And in this election, there are many people who actually voted for the first time in 20 years. There are people who I heard anecdotally who voted for the first time lives, people in their 60s who voted for the first time in their lives. So I think there was an unknown factor in those polls. And I think if you're going to look at like the biggest loser in this election, it's all the polling methodology that's been done because they have to figure out a way to actually look at those people. There was a very quiet Trump vote and not so quiet sometimes, but they went out to the polls. People said, well, gee, you know, 11,000 people at a rally, are they going to vote? Well, you know, the thing is, the Trump campaign said for uh, the entire length of this campaign, if they stood for seven hours to see him, they're certainly not going to uh, give up on election day. They're certainly going to go to the polls. Absolutely. David Yonke, he'll be here with us all morning long. And thank goodness, because we have a ton of questions for you. Okay. So thank you very much. And we'll be right back. And we are joined now by political analyst David Yonke. Thanks for being here with us this morning. Happy to be here. Happy day after election. Yeah, yeah glad right? to have you. We made it. You're operating on what? Two hours sleep right Two now? And Two and a half. Because we were all up late yeah. last night, of course, Two watching. First question for you right now. Hillary Clinton has called Donald Trump reportedly to congratulate him on his victory. But we have not heard from her officially any concession speech. We're waiting for that, what tone do you expect her to strike? Well, I think that she is going to set a pretty good tone. I think she's going to be disappointed. I think that this was a lifelong dream of hers. So I think that she will be conciliatory. But look for maybe something, look for a little warning. I think that she would want to, you know, hold a lot of the promises that he made um, accountable. So I think uh, I think it's going to be fair and balanced, uh, so to speak. But uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say. Well, speaking of tone, let's talk about um, Donald Trump's victory speech and his demeanor, very calm. Uh, I don't really want to say last night, but three hours very ago. Very early this morning, yeah. Yeah, it was calm, and he was very um, measured and conciliatory, and uh, that's a good start. Absolutely. Now, if Hillary had won, she'd be making history as the first woman president. What history, if any, is Donald Trump making with his victory? Donald Trump is making huge history, to use his words. He is the first political civilian to ever be elected president. If you take a look at the history of our presidency, Every president at some point either had military experience, like Eisenhower and Grant or, Tag or Taylor, or had some type of political experience, whether it be like being on a school board, you know, being a secretary in a cabinet, being a, um, a senator, congressman, governor. So he becomes the very first political civilian. The last president who was elected was 1952 Eisenhower. He never held elective office, but he had military experience. So it's going to be interesting because I think that by Donald Trump being the political civilian, the voters have sent a message to Washington that we want something different in our government. And how that's going to play out in the next four years is going to be anybody's guess. And quickly here, was there one moment last night where you realized this is not going to work out in Hillary Clinton's yeah, favor? Yeah, Virginia. As soon as I and she picked Tim Kaine to be the vice presidential nominee to help bolster Virginia. And when I saw that the totals in Virginia 
were about dead even, and she did win Virginia, but not by a lot. I knew that she was going to be in trouble. All right, political analyst David Yonke will talk to you one more time. Thank you for joining us this morning on Eyewitness Thank News. Thank you. And we'll be right back with more. Well, checking in with David Yonkai right now, our political analyst. So glad to have you here this morning. First things first, yeah. you're the brains behind the LULAC political letter. How could people follow that if they want to see more of your analysis? Uh, LULACpoliticalletter.blogspot.com. Very good. Ten All years right. we've been doing it. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Trump and Clinton. We've seen throughout this you know, whole election process, Trump kind of bashing her. Do you think he's going to continue that, continue to kind of go after her, or do you think he's going to lay off now that he has claimed victory? Well, he's been very generous to her, but Donald Trump has a problem with his rhetoric. I don't think he believes everything that he said, okay? But I think his supporters believe everything that he said. And when he started inciting, like, cheers, like, lock her up, um, I don't think that he would really want to do that, but he's kind of put himself in a box because his supporters basically um, want that to happen. So um, I, I think it's going to be very interesting to see whether he's going to appoint a special prosecutor or not or just let that go. If he lets that go, I'm sure that some of his ardent supporters are going to say, you broke your first promise. So how did Trump do this? How did he win the presidency? He won some states that Romney lost back in 2012. Those are Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, of course, Iowa, Florida, Ohio, so many states that are key to winning the presidency. How did he do this? Well, let's take Pennsylvania. He ran up majorities in areas of Pennsylvania that were big Republican areas that always went Republican. But what he did is he increased turnout in those areas. And he made inroads in places like Luzerne County where he won by 26,000 votes. He kind of broke even in Lackawanna County. So that kind of offset the big Philadelphia edge that the Democrats nearly had. So he kind of took a strategy in each battleground state where he really went to areas where he thought that he could win, like Wilkesbury and Scranton. And also in other states, he went to areas that were traditionally red Republican areas, build up those majorities so that the Clinton firewall basically collapsed. Now, do you throw out the book on how to run a presidential yeah. election year? His grassroots organization, ground game, nothing compared to Hillary Clinton. It is gone. Whatever we thought about running a conventional political campaign has been thrown out the window from not not necessarily like maybe a third floor window, but from a skyscraper. <laughs> there right up there. All the right. Trump Tower, you can yes, say. Yes, exactly. All right. David Yonke, thank you, and we'll see you back here in the next half hour as well. And happy we'll, to be here. Thank we're you. We're happy to have you. And please stay tuned. We have continuing coverage all morning long. And, of course, you can head to pahomepage.com as well.